Salutations and respected viewers, I am George from Ireland and here I am at Hampton Court Palace in London um, and the, this district of London is called Hampton. So um, Hampton Court is a gigantic palace um, in, in area it's the largest palace in the United Kingdom but uh, it's not the largest inhabited one because that goes to to uh, Windsor Castle the largest inhabited castle or indeed palace in the world because the royal family don't live here haven't lived here for centuries any of them even though it actually is a royal palace and you can see um, this coat of arms above the door but it, there's, there's a griffin on one side this mythical beast on the right um, it's not the standard supporters as in the two mythical animals the lion and the unicorn you I get on either side but uh, if you looked at them closely below the crown, you'd see the fleur de lis of France. You would see um, the three lions passant of, of um, uh, England, originally of Normandy. I don't think they've got the lion rampant of Scotland. I can't make it out from here because perhaps that's prior to 1603 when the King of Scots also became King of England. So uh, there, there is a um, magnificent scope and sweep to this place. Um, the the uh, sheer dimensions of it are impressive uh, in themselves. Um, anyway, so back here, and there's a bit of a moat. Obviously, it hasn't has served any military purpose for a long time, but behind, you'll see that it gets quite deep there, and obviously there'll be water flowing through there, often water draining out of the kitchens and indeed the privy, so um, it would have stunk to high heaven. Um, so that, that would be a bit of an impediment if you couldn't storm the gate and trying to go down and go up and getting soaked in mud and, and a lot worse. But look at all these mythical beasts here holding various um, coats of arms and there's the Seymour unicorn, because remember um, Henry VIII, he later married Jane Seymour, his, his wife who dutifully produced a masculine child, Edward VI, but she died of puerperal fever only 12 days later, as in it's a, it's a, a disease associated with the in child bed. And um, obviously when Henry VIII died, his son being nine years old, Edward VI, he was very much reliant on his maternal uncle, um, who was uh, then made Duke of, uh, of um, Somerset, as Lord Protector of the Realm, as in Regent, ruling on behalf of Edward VI because owing to the tenderness of the monarch's youth, he was unable to fully discharge his duties himself. But there was a coup in 1549 when he was ousted by the Duke of Northumberland, as in Ed Edward, the, Edward the Sixth uncle, who was later executed, but Edward the Sixth was um, completely blasé about his uncle being put to death. You think he'd be a sort of surrogate father for him. And he just recorded in his diary in a very matter-of-fact matter of way that um, the Duke of Somerset was executed the march in suing. Anyway, so there are many more of these mythical um, uh, beasts, and if you look closely, I wish they'd painted them as well, because I presume they would have been painted originally. You can see the royal coat of arms being held by a royal dragon that still heralds, called like the Rouge Dragon Persevant, as in following Poursuivre in French, the Queen's Lion, um, holding some sort of castle on the shield, and there are more examples like that. There's a mythical beast called, called a Yale, which I hadn't heard of till, till quite a short, lot, short time ago. Okay, the Bull of Clarence. So there's, there's the Duke of Clarence is a cursed title. It was George, Duke of Clarence, who was not drowned in a butt of Malmsey wine, as William Shakespeare would have you believe, but he was put to death for, for treason. And Richard III did not have a hand in that brother's death. It was um, his brother, Edward IV, who had uh, George, Duke of Clarence, put to death, or indeed Queen Victoria's eldest uh, grandson, Prince Eddie, or better known, no, was, was really, his real name was Albert Victor, but known as Prince Eddie, and he died of pneumonia at the age of 27. Okay, so the Queen's Panther, probably probably um, blinded by the brilliance of that fiery orb behind me. And there's the Tudor dragon, of course, Henry the Seventh, Henry the Eighth, Edward the Sixth, I suppose, well, Lady Jane Grey, um, Mary Tudor, and indeed Elizabeth I. They're all the Tudor dynasty. There's a bit of a mid-Tudor crisis. That was a bad one. Okay, so the Yale of Beaufort. Okay, that's an area of Western England. There's a Beaufort hunt over there. And indeed, there, there's a Duke of Beaufort, I'm pretty sure, to this day, and the Greyhound of Richmond. Now, are we talking about Richmond on Thames or Richmond in Yorkshire? That's the original Richmond, is the one in Yorkshire. And um, Henry the um, uh, Seventh, when he came down to, to when he came to London, um, he had an estate in Yorkshire. Despite being a Lancastrian, he had a land in Yorkshire, North Yorkshire. And he said, oh, well, I'll name this place Sheen. And after, after my estate in Yorkshire, I'll call it Richmond upon Thames to avoid confusion between Richmond and Yorkshire and Richmond in this area. So Richmond, the other Richmond, as a Richmond upon Thames, is only about five miles away from here. The Lion of England, and look at that many quartered escutcheon there, the lion's looking away from us. So anyway, we'll just... So what else have we got here? Oh, I'm looking at the motto above, Dieu est mon droit but misspelled, as in the royal motto in French, God in my right. <clears throat> I just heard her say, those have got to be for personal use. 
but let's look up here. Look at that royal coat of arms on the ceiling. The, the gold harp of Ireland, the Tudor rose, the red and white rose. You can see what's up my nostril, not too bad. Um, the, the red and white rose, because of course, when uh, after the Battle of Bosworth Field, when Richard III was killed, then um, Henry VII, he wed Elizabeth of York, as in the sister of Richard III, who'd just been killed by um, uh, Edward, the, uh, sixth, uh, Edward VII's men. So um, might have made for an awkward courtship, not that she had any choice in the matter. So, um, there was a palace here as long ago as 1400. Now you'll see a number of these allusions to various Roman emperors, but I'll tell you about those in a minute. Um, and this place is very redolent of Eton, which was obviously built after 1440. It was founded by Henry VI. So a very, very similar style. Um, so that was very much en vogue at the time. I don't know a great deal about architecture, particularly in the 15th century. Um, and you see this uh, sort of diamond motif with the black painted bricks on the red bricks. And that was going right into the, into the 19th century. Um, as a popular design to have on these buildings. Now uh, this guy, he's looking a tad off color. Oh God, oh yeah, he's got his mask to put on, I suppose he's an executioner. Right, they tend not to be the most sociable sorts. Um, <clears throat> they had the perfect cure for the headache, as Dr. Ignace Guillotin said. Um, anyway, and the, the, the palace, most of it was, was raised um, from well, when, when Cardinal Wolsey got the area and began to construct his palace, and it was um, confiscated by Henry VIII in 1529. And now Cardinal Wolsey um, was a man of vaulting ambition and thought that he might become the Bishop of Rome. So he was um, uh, entertaining a lot of continental prelates here, and he put up all these, um, uh, all these uh, signs, mentions of various Roman emperors, see Hadrianus Imperator. Imperator being emperor, was literally commander, as in imperare, to command. Or what's the word? Um, ah, like, that's why I say imperative. Um, okay, and then, um, but that didn't happen. He didn't get elected pope. It was Italians from 1520 right up until 1978 when Karol Wojtyla, the Pole, the, the, was he Archbishop of Krakow or is it just bishop? Got it. And then there's um, Jorge. Bergoglio, who was, who was born, to, born in Argentina to Italian parents, Pope Francis, so he can be regarded as both Italian and, and Argentine. So yeah, so for, my goodness, it was 450 years, every single one of them was an Italian, because of course any of the cardinals vote who the new pope should be, the College of Cardinals. Every medium-sized town in Italy's got an archbishop, and most of those are cardinals, so about half the College of Cardinals were Italians, so they tended to pick themselves. Before that, been a few Spaniards, one Englishman, no Irishman, sadly. A few French, but even Greeks, or Greek Catholics, Germans. Was there a Dutchman? I think that was about it. But um, you get an idea of the uh, dimensions of the place. Um, what else should I, should I point out? So um, there's almost nothing that's original from 1400. A lot of it's the sort of 1515 construction, and then Henry VIII expanded it. You can see the brickwork has changed where they've had to repair it, but they've always done it in a sympathetic style. But this is quite a vernacular style for this country. So I'll carry on. There's a gaggle of school children going by. Um, anyway, so it really is a statement in stone, emphasizing his, uh, his wealth and might, well, of the Cardinal and later on of the King was well outside London, away from plague and all the filth. So they had uh, huge kitchens here employing 200 people. And one of the most unenviable tasks was to have to turn the meat on the stick and be there only wearing a loincloth, because if you say roasting, you'd be perspiring like a pig. And um, uh, they had to serve 600 meals twice daily. Oh yeah, and then above the door, he got HR on either side, Henricus Rex. Um, <clears throat> Oh look, Anne Boleyn's gateway. She spent some time when she was queen. I wonder if her shenanigans went on here. Those seven men she was supposed to be having an affair with, including her brother George. And there were eyewitness statements saying that they saw um, her majesty the queen put her tongue into a man's mouth and blah, blah, blah. So obviously um, uh, adultery in the royal family was, was an attempt on the throne. That was high treason because if she became pregnant as a result of her liaison with a paramour, that infant would be presumed to be the king's child and could one day inherit the crown. So you've got Ogalba, the emperor, Titus and others. Oh, oh you see George II, 1732 by the door, Georgus Rex and Julius, that emperor, and Otho. Oh, so lots of emperors mentioned here. And then there's a huge chapel to this side. I have been here once, but not for 22 years because it costs at least 23 to quit to get in if you're an adult. I know it's hard to believe, but I am an adult much though I don't behave like one. 
Okay, so you can see the cobblestone there. Of course, people riding in and out. So it's huge, but you can show how secure they were that they didn't build it, particularly with, with a military purpose in mind. And then I'm looking above here, I'm seeing Medusa on the shield. Or, yeah, that, that slain Gorgon. A woman so hideous she could turn a man to stone. Well, I know a few like that. <clears throat> so many allusions to classical mythology. Oh, the gift shop. Often the exits through the gift shop. Buy a few souvenirs. I'm not a complete sucker for that. Um, so they have historical reenactors in 16th century costume. What a place. So it wouldn't have been so clean at the time. The horses would have been leaving their cobblers all over the shop. So um, because it's February, there are not that many tourists here, which is why there's not a long queue for, for tickets or anything like this. August will be very busy. So ideally come low season like this. And any time of year, if you come as soon as it opens, there are fewer tourists, because tourists tend to have a late start, a leisurely breakfast, take some time to get here, and the queues build up and up and up. Don't come on a weekend, don't come on a bank holiday. The queues will be worse back then. Uh, not sure what they're queuing to get into, but just showing you a little bit of Hampton Court. And I'll go inside some of the buildings, see some of the royal apartments, see how they used to dress at the time, seeing more mentions of em emperors. And look at that clock up there. Ooh, very ornate. And you can see all the way out. See how far it is right out to towards the park and towards the River Thames. Okay, I'll switch it off now. That's enough for the moment. So make sure you subscribe.